The media is the most powerful entity on earth. They have the power to make the innocent guilty and to make the guilty innocent. And that's power because they control the minds of the masses. Malcolm Little was born on May 19, 1925 in Omaha, Nebraska. His mother was a homemaker and his father was a Baptist minister and avid supporter of black nationalist leader Marcus Garvey. While in Boston, Malcolm was arrested and convicted on burglary charges in 1946 and was sentenced to 10 years in prison, although he was granted parole after serving seven years. While in prison, Malcolm started to learn more about history, society, and the Nation of Islam. He would receive and send letters to the leader of the Nation of Islam, Elijah Muhammad. Once he was paroled in 1952, Malcolm became a devoted follower of the teachings of Elijah Muhammad in the Nation of Islam and removed the surname Little and replaced it with an X to reflect the unknown history that was stolen due to slavery. Malcolm X traveled to Detroit, Michigan where he worked with the leader of the Nation of Islam, Elijah Muhammad, to expand the movement following among black Americans nationwide. Malcolm X became the minister of Temple No. 7 in Harlem and Temple No. 11 in Boston, while also founding new temples in Hartford and Philadelphia. Malcolm exhorted black people to cast off their shackles of racism by any means necessary. You don't have a peaceful revolution. You don't have the turn of the cheek revolution. There's no such thing as a nonviolent revolution. Such militant proposals of violent revolution to establish an independent black nation won Malcolm X large numbers of followers as well as many fierce critics. In 1960, he established a national newspaper, Muhammad Speaks, in order to further promote the message of the Nation of Islam. Due primarily to the efforts of Malcolm X, the Nation of Islam grew from a mere 400 members at the time he was released from 1952 to 40,000 members in 1960. Malcolm X had emerged as a leading voice of radicalized wing, presenting an alternative to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s vision of racially integrated society achieved by peaceful means. In 1963, Malcolm X became deeply disillusioned when he learned that his hero and mentor had violated many of his own teachings by carrying on many extramarital affairs. His feelings of betrayal combined with Muhammad's angers over Malcolm's insensitive comment regarding the assassination of President John F. Kennedy led Malcolm X to leave the Nation of Islam in 1964. After his epiphany at Mecca, Malcolm X returned to the United States less angry and more optimistic about prospects for a peaceful resolution to America's race problem. The true brotherhood I had seen had influenced me to recognize that anger can blind human vision. America is the first country that can actually have a bloodless revolution. At a speaking engagement in Manhattan's Audubon Ballroom on February 21st, 1965, three gunmen rushed Malcolm on stage, which led to his untimely death by gunshot. Malcolm's ideology of by any means necessary has remained a staple within black intellectual thought. He was more than just a radical, as he was typecasted in mainstream media, but a hero, a person who spoke up against a racial industrialized system that ignored the woes of black people and used his intelligence to combat the ideology that relegated black thought and black lives to worthlessness and nothingness. He stands as a symbol that regardless of what we go through in our lives, if we go to prison, if we don't continue with mainstream education, that we can still be intellectual, that we can still be strong, and that we can still fight for our rights for our people.